Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. We came here 23 years ago. Wanted to be in Western North Carolina because we love the ecosystem here, Southern Appalachian Mountains, you know, being avid hikers and bikers and paddlers, we came here frequently um, to recreate. And when we had a choice to say, where do you want to live? We chose Western North Carolina and uh, ended up here in Henderson County, just south of Asheville, and bought a house with a view on a lot. And then we decided we wanted to be engaged in growing some of our own food. Mm -hmm. And that led to chickens and goats, and, and my wife says, well, I, I really have to have a horse. And I said, well, if you have to have a horse, then that horse needs to be able to drag logs out of the forest. Because I like heating my home with wood. And she said, okay, real quickly. And I knew we were about to embark on a big adventure. So here, uh, Clifford's mare, Rosie, and my gelding, Copper, uh, have been working together as a team for the first time on Thursday, for the second time on Saturday, and they've done remarkably well. Do you um, log with D-Ring? Yeah. Yourself? Yeah. It had, is that how you started out? That's all that I know, and okay. you know, I've never... Once I learned how to properly adjust the D-ring, because you know it's it's not just it's it's harder to be correct on a D-ring than it is on a side back. You have to, yeah, you have to learn you have to learn the the function of it and yeah. understand the function, and then as you change implements, you know you need to make adjustments to get that D-ring adjusted properly. But from the time that I learned how the D-ring actually works and how to make correct adjustments, I've never soared a neck. I've never had to take a day off because my horse has a sore neck. And that's a constant problem with some of my Amish friends, right. you know, especially during the summer. They're always dealing with sore necks. Combination of sweat and the weight. Sweat and the weight and, the, and the dust. Movement. Yeah. yeah, and the dust, yeah. So, and it just makes sense to put the weight back there where they're, they're, right. on their back. they're designed to carry weight on their back a whole lot better than on the neck. And there's enough weight on the neck too, just, just the collar. That's enough. They don't need any extra. Because right. my log arches, you know, they're 70, 75 pounds at the end of the pole. That's not super heavy, but that's, it's heavy enough. And when you're going through hitting potholes and running over stumps. And you make your own hay or do that kind of stuff at Russell Springs with your it. horses? I make every bit of hay that I can. And rake and well right now I just mow yeah and and everything else I, I use a tractor for yeah. but I'm trying to transition to it and, and a lot of that comes down to I, I don't really have a second hand to, yeah. to help me with some of it. And when you're making hay you want to get it up when you yeah. can. Yeah it's it's can't. it's a time sensitive operation. And it's worth a lot. It is. You don't want to lose the, lose the crop. Yeah, it's, it can be stressful, but I, there's nothing more enjoyable than mowing hay with the horses. Right. I like to hear the just mower sing. just click along, and if everything's going good, which I, I bought a, a newly refurbished mower from Amish. On McCormick? Yeah, it's a number nine McCormick, and it just, well, I mowed close to 50 acres with it this year, and it never missed a beat. Just. And people they knew don't, how to make machines back in the day. They did, and, and people don't really understand just just how much you can get done with with them on the mowing. It's a six foot cutter, right? But with two teams, you can do about the same as what a tractor can do in a day. Right. So, 
it's not that much slower really right right i mean of course in the heat of summer there's you it slows it's you down to too sure. but If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's rule yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is fieldwork showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seed beds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard, feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In Volume 3, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each, or you can buy two for $44.95, or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's 1-877-647-2452. You had a good summer? I have. Good. Sorghum coming on? I didn't know. Uh, I wasn't able to grow any sorghum this year. The, um, the land I had wasn't good land for sorghum. I, I looked for some land and I think I'll have uh, grow sorghum next year. And okay. Also, we're fighting the white aphid real bad. I see. And um, so um, having to grow it earlier and um, may, may come to where we have to treat it. Uh, treat the uh, seed or? The, no, the plant. Okay. Uh, to resist the white aphid. The hmm. Later season, we used to like to grow a lot for later season this time of year, October. Uh, late September, October, but we're trying to produce it a little earlier in the season. Um, so we're uh, kind of getting away from the white aphid. Uh, it seems to be worse for later in the year. So this was a pocket of, of ash trees infected with the emerald ash borer. And so we made the decision to go ahead and let's cut every ash we can before they get too dangerous to fell and the wood is of no value. So we've been aggressively cutting the ash out of this section of our forest. These semi-permanent trails you got going through here for harvesting timber? All these trails were in this forest from when they harvested timber a hundred years ago. No kidding. And you know, all That's we had to do was find them and open them back up. Yeah, wow, that is something special. And that's the way it is all over the country. Is that right? Yeah, first thing I do when I go in the woods is I look and see for the old trails. You know, we're where it happened at before because those people they knew the best routes off the hill ash is one of the few forest trees that the it branches opposite so the the limbs that come off of the trunk come off at the same place i see okay most of our other forest trees like oak and are opposite one comes off here one comes off here so you can pick the ash out in the canopy because they're distinctly opposite branching. Huh. And huh. you they know, also have a really big end up there at the very top. Mm -hmm. the, a kind real of a broad clump, a clump of yeah, real branches big, coming together. It's a real big diameter. I like, see. Oh, I see. Okay. It looks like a bunch yeah. of fingers sticking out. But if you pan to this ash tree in the distance, you see that tree with no leaves on it at all? up in this canopy, that is another infected ash tree. Oh, over here yonder. Yeah, okay. Raise your camera up to the yep, blue yep, sky yep. and you'll right see, there. you know, that, that ash tree just saying, I'm hurting. 
I'm yep. dead or right. I'm dying. Right. Yeah. Is there a a blight now hitting oak trees some places? You hear of? There's something happening in oak trees, and I don't know if anybody knows what it is. Okay. I keep hearing that. Yeah, they're they're just random oak mortality, and it's like, well, what happened? But, you you know, know, there's no disturbance, and some of it they're calling sudden oak death. Mm -hmm. You know, but I've I've seen different types of this in in oak trees that I don't think they know yet what it yeah. is. That's pretty scary. It is scary, especially you know we're talking about, and they the ones I've seen are in really rapid decline. You know, oaks, a lot of times when they're going down, they'll go slowly. Right. And you've got a little bit of harvest time. But I've right. seen some that just in a few years, I mean, they're gone. Now on this fall here, Bob, let's, yeah. let's talk about it a minute. Sure. That tree wants to go like right over into that pocket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how much I can pull it, but it, I would like to get it down here by the creek. Mm -hmm. So bring it this side of the double pull. If, right if I can get it, to do that, I would like to, but if I can't, you know, that's your little hemlock that's been treated right there. Is that going to be an issue? No, no, if no. It, but Ben, I'm looking at that tree, and I know you can lay it right down in there. Well, I, I think I can, yeah. but you know, know ash you is brittle, and sometimes yep. it lets go. Yeah, no, but you, right here between that oak with the dead top, that little snag in that hemlock, and you can lay it right down here. Just put a line on. Well, I shall endeavor. <laughs> just put a line in the dirt. Yeah, I'll, I'll put a put a post put in and just I'll pound put it in. Marker right here. Yeah, <laughs> pound that post in. Better for knock it down before I get there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, when they fork, they um. They're hard to predict how they're going to turn. And ash, they? ash particularly is hard okay. because they're so crooked and, and gnarly. They'll be leaning one way at the base, but then the tops will be going another way. Right. And of course, tops is more the determined factor than, than right. the bottom. Right, right. But I've had some that I thought, I know for sure this is this is where it's going. Nope, it didn't want to go that way. We might get it that way, we might not. But like I say, ash, a lot of times the hinge will actually break off on you. Okay. And it's just, uh, it's it's slightly difficult wood to, mm -hmm. to fell. Mm -hmm. It's not terrible bad, but poplar's one of the sweetest. It just, you can do what, about whatever you want with poplar. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. Last year, this park-like setting you see here, um, we decided to do some work in. It was a rhododendron mountain laurel thicket. Oh, really? You know, you couldn't even walk through it. Wow. And it couldn't be used for, you know, pigs or goats or anything like that either. So we went through and we hand cut all of it. And then we came by and we mulched the stumps up. Wow. And so now we're going to plant some forest understory medicinal plants like ginseng and... Um, a, a couple of the others, but um, and then there's several large oaks in there, and we'll be able to run our pigs through there next fall during the acorn crop, right? And we can finish them on acorns. So he's gonna put this ash on the ground now. And, uh, so this is probably a pretty good safe spot to stand. We should kind of lay down 45 degrees to where we are. It should be a safe distance. This is a uh, Carolina hemlock that has been really impacted by the hemlock woolly adelgid. And so this spring, we treated this hemlock with a very specific pesticide for the hemlock woolly adelgid. And they 
put a blue dot on the base of it that said this tree was treated. It's got a blue dot, so we, we're going to know that that was done in 2021. And, you know, and then the health of this tree will start to improve drastically. And then in four years, we'll take a look at it and determine whether we want to treat it again. Are you but, ready for me to drop this? Yes, sir, we're clear. So, um, so these in the understory of this mature forest, you know, we're hoping to bring back, have them produce healthy seeds and start to start to get some regeneration and don't lose that because that's a very valuable wildlife tree. Right. Everybody likes a hemlock. hemlock yeah. Including the adelgid. Yeah. Is that a insect or is that a fungus or is that a that is a uh it is an, an an one that was not in north america that came an invasive exotic that um you know, that has probably wiped out you know 80 percent of the hemlocks in western north carolina and i should say all of southern appalachia yeah Sound, yeah, it does. Right. It's a, a bigger bass drum that it's resonating through. Yeah. So this hole in the canopy that we've made here is going to attract um, wildlife that likes these disturbed open areas opposed to the old growth forests. So, you know, the warblers and, you know, migratory songbirds like this area. Of course, you know, the deer will be back in here, you know, browse pretty heavy. And in other, you know, and this is uh, an intentional outcome of, you know, our forest management plan is creating these young stands that support different wildlife than the mature birds. Right. Right. right now we have an overabundance of 80 to 100 year old forest and the species diversity in these forests is declining. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So Pete is going to come and start to pull a couple of these pieces of firewood out. Okay. I got air when I put a saw so we can... Yeah clean the road back out. Yep. And uh you got some and, nice oak regeneration starting oh, up. Yeah. There. Get up once you get up in the trail. Oh, 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 This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.